Lou, we were off last week. We're off. Well, kind of. Not really. Yeah. We were in the we were in the studio, but a different studio. We are 93.7 The Fan. Yeah. If you didn't listen all the way through last episode, we did tease at the end. Yes, we did. That well, was a lot of fun, man. We're back, though. It's, it's Victory Monday. It's Victory Monday. We're back. A little bit of Monday night before the Monday night game. It's always nice to come here for a win, huh? It's Always so different. nice. It's, like it's a different, you different were just saying, we're doing winners and losers on this, and we got Christmas at the end. Yes, sir. Stay, you know that gets me excited. Stay tuned for the Christmas section. Yep. Um, I mean, that's your favorite holiday, right? Christmas Eve is my favorite holiday. It's my favorite day of the year. It's not even close. Yeah. So we have Christmas at the end. Yep. Um, great, great segment there. But it's so easy. You just said to make the winners after you win. It's really easy to make. The winners when you win and the losers when you lose. It just comes like instantly to you. But I have yeah. four good losers. I have four good winners. Let's do it. Let's get right into it. Which one do you feel the strongest about? Which, you you which, can do you can do a winner. Or, we should do winners first. We won the game. Yeah. All right, go ahead. My my winner might be the winner. Like This is like my number one winner of the winners. Okay. Okay. I have to go with Larry Ogunjobi in the defensive line. I mean... What an outstanding performance from start to finish, really. I mean, Carolina's first play that they ran, the Steelers blew it up in the backfield. They gave up, or the Steelers only gave up 21 rushing yards the entire game. There was nothing going on. Oh, wow, that was unbelievable. I didn't see a performance like that from a long time from D-line. That was really nice. And that was a comeback performance because everyone after the last game was just like, oh, Baltimore's going to run it. You can't stop it. What is right. this? This is not Steeler football. Right. That was Steeler football. I mean, I'll even give you my second winner right now because they coincide with each other. Give it to me. Second winner is the offensive line. Can't believe I'm saying it. Gave up one sack and ran the ball for 156 yards. So to put everything in perspective, I guess with the winner, if you want to put them together, would be the trenches. The Steelers, for the first time this year, won in the Battle of the Trenches. And we've said this before, but, you know, sometimes football's not that complicated. Yeah, I was listening to, um, who's I listening to today? Forget who it was on the fan. They said it perfectly. Or it was Stan Savern, actually. Stan Savern. He said, if you really take football and you just boil it down to the least complex thing, the most simplest thing is, I'm going to knock you over before you knock me over. Who's going to get a push? That, and that's something that the Steelers have struggled with for years, not just this year, you know. Well, we haven't invested in the offensive line. Correct, correct. It, you, if you're looking at it from like a GM perspective, you would think that's our weakest spot. We haven't had a first round pick there since DeCastro. I don't even think we had a second round pick. Which is well, it, it, you know, you can argue both sides. It's the battle of the trenches that the Steelers haven't addressed for years. It shows. But finally, we got a good game where. Both sides of the both sides hey, of the line play great. Can we give a shout to Dan Moore? Can we? I think we can. I, that it's time. Yeah. It took till week fifteen, but we can say good game, Dan Moore. With that being said, though, I'm still thinking of drafting a left tackle with. My oh, first absolutely. Pick. But hey, Dodson played a hell of a game. Hey, he even drive me a little bit crazy. But yeah, it's it's the first time they all actually kind of played together. Is it? I mean, Mason Cole was getting to the second, third level. Haven't seen that since Pouncey. You know, old school Pouncey when he was young. I just wanted to give a shout out to the left side because that was the side that was really taking heat. We crushed the left side all year, and deservedly so. But yeah, they finally put it all together, man. That was nice to see. Really nice to see. Well, it kind of feeds into my winner. Let me hear it. My winner is offensive identity. I I can I can definitely get on board with that. There hasn't really been a game this year where I felt like we had a plan. We executed it, and, you know, that was – it felt like things were coming together. You factor in the pass blocking, the run blocking, and the running backs got going. It was nice to see Jalen Warren out there. It felt like, okay, this is our identity. We're going to get a push. We have strong running backs, and we're not going to ask our quarterback to do too much. You didn't see – How about the three touchdowns to that point? Najee, Jalen, and Trubisky. All, all three rushing touchdowns. And, and, like, you know, rushing touchdowns are something you'd probably see on a drive that goes for 11 minutes. It was – that. I mean, that is – It was, what, a 21-play, like, 11-49? And it was – I've never seen that for a long time. That's nearly the full quarter. That's amazing. That, that might – they. so after the first drive of the game, 
where the Steelers were actually, the Utah want to talk about identity. They knew what they were going to do. They came in, they ran the ball. They were very efficient on third down. I just looked at, I believe they were 12 of 16 on third down. Incredible. That's pretty good. After the first drive where they, where they pushed down the field and they ran the ball, I said, wow. I told my dad, I said, that was the best drive they have had all year. I mean, there's, it's going to be hard to beat. Didn't think that coming out in the second half, we'd run a 21 play, 11, 11 minute, 30 second drive, which was, they had two drives in that game were the best two drives of the season. Easily, easily, not even debatable. You know what's congruent with all these wins, though? Oh, I, I know the answer to this. You look at wins that we've had recently, post by yeah. Falcons, Colts, this one with the Panthers. They're wins where it's like, we're going to win, and we're not going to do too much. Yeah. We're going to run the ball. Our defense is going to take care of business, and we're not going to ask our quarterback to go out there and perform a miracle. Mitch, you got to give a little credit to Mitch here. He played well. He did his – He played he, terrible. He played within his, within his role. Bounce back. Yes. If you're telling me that's the Mitchell Trubisky I get next year, I'll sign up for him as my backup. It's a lot of money next year. His cap hits a lot higher than this year. But if that's the Mitch I can get, I know that if Kenny gets hurt, I can live in that world. I can't live in the Mitch versus Baltimore world. On that Mitch. Makes that, that makes sense. Okay. I'm cool with that world. I can relax in that world. I think, I think in the NFL, with the way it is, especially with concussions, and Kenny had two in eight weeks, and the way that they are <laughs> identifying them, you need a backup. Wait, but I, I, can we talk about the identification, though? Why do they keep saying, Kenny Pickett battling concussion protocol? Is he battling the protocol? Or, like, are we fighting the is, – is that what he's fighting? Or is he – just say he has a concussion. So I find it interesting that he had a concussion, right? So his second concussion now. But he practiced. I know. I saw, him with, I saw his new helmet. I'm kind of confused how that works. I don't I, get if it. If you're in protocol, why are you even pra- – like, You got a concussion or you don't. Right. Now, is it one of those things where you have to do something physically to see how your body reacts after? I don't know. That's the only thing I could possibly think of. I just don't know why they keep referring to it as battling concussion protocol. Are you recovering from a concussion or are you trying to like, it's almost like you're trying to like just pass the steps necessary. But I guess the second thing that, that I don't understand, and maybe you do, I don't, is it, is, are the rules different because it's his second Probably. In, I, I would in, think so. I would hope so. I mean, because that's the whole logic, right? Is you get one Isn't the whole another. point of this yeah. is to make sure, like, we're not getting these major head injuries? Dude, like, none of it uh, makes sense. I mean, we, we saw this with Tua. We saw, like, it's it's happening across the league. I don't I don't know anyone the, that the has Tua, the The Tua situation really, like, put everyone back on their heels, and deservedly so. I just don't know why they keep saying that. But There's anyway, no wait. There's reason to half-ass this. More on, get it right or not. More on Mitch, though. Yeah. Like we said, awesome on third down. So I have two winners for you. Go ahead. First winner, Deontay. Oh. You texted me during the game. What'd you say? I'm really starting to hate this guy. <laughs> he goes 10 of 10. <laughs> yeah, but... It was awesome all day. Okay, but he did... Okay. All right. We're going we're gonna to get this out of the way. He put right? on a show with the route running, Lou. We're going to get this out of the way right now. Okay. He was great on the field, but he did a couple things. A, the taunting after the third down catch. Can't do that. Almost cost the Steelers points. Hey. Well, we'll have more on taunting in a bit. <laughs> oh, yes, we will. And I hope Marcus Allen doesn't listen because I got some really un- unlikely things to say. He to was him. the easiest loser on my Oh, it's not even close. Anyway, B, do you know Deontay Johnson was signing autographs with two minutes left in the game? What? He was signing autographs on the sidelines in the fans with two minutes left in the game. That's number two. Number three. Like the cameras caught him? Yo, yeah. It's on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Number three, the onside kick at the end of the game, the, he has to know the rule. The ball has to go 10 yards. The only way that that ball is active, he went and touched it before it went 10 yards. I really thought they recovered that. Yeah, like there was no reason to go and touch it, though. Like how do you not know that rule? He's really – Frank. We eight, don't know a lot of the rules, apparently. For, for $18 million, I'm good. Well, it's only a two-year deal. It's not, it's not something to sweat. Uh, I'm really starting to really not like his antics. Really not. Okay. Deontay has to be a winner. It's his best game of the season. Uh, yeah, no, I, he put I, in a show fine, with the route running. He fine. almost screwed it up. I wouldn't, if he lost that onside kick, he, I wouldn't have him as a winner. Okay. But we did. Go ahead. Your second winner. Um, 
It has to be Canada. Isn't that interesting? Because he, he, I have. I mean, we were so hard on this guy. I, ha- I got to be objective about it. Come on, he, the guy had a nice day. We we're you know, awesome on third down. Here's the problem I have. I don't have a problem with him being a winner of the game, but everyone keeps saying the more and more this offense looks better, it's a better chance he has to come back next year. I can't have that. Do people seem to not I forget how bad we were? The people first- do not realize he's coming back. He's- the Steelers are not going to pay him to leave. They're, they're, they, the Steelers but don't. We talked about that, that, he, that they could and they should. I think he should be gone now. Like, I'm done with Canada. I don't, I don't think he's the future. So you're saying he's a winner because he has a, had a good game. Yeah. But my point is, if he has good games, these next three games, he's coming back next year. He's coming back regardless. And that doesn't... Oh. He's coming back regardless. The Steelers yeah, I, are too cheap of a franchise to just pay him to be on the street. Okay, it's but not that's happen. not good. I don't. It's horrible. Good. I mean, do we seem to forget how stagnant the offense was in the beginning? I mean, like, I don't want to pat ourselves in the back here too much. We beat Carolina. They were 5-8. and eight, like. Oh, the Steelers swept the NFC South. Wow, yeah, I, I didn't they... actually realize that until right now. Sweep it. <laughs> Bring the man, man, we should pat ourselves Bring in the back. <laughs> we beat the worst division yeah. in football? Yeah. I mean, how bad's that division? Holy shit. They might be worse than the AFC South. Oh, yeah. No, that uh, easily. There, there's going to be a sub-500 team be a division winner and have a home playoff game. That rule needs to change. If you no, win your, I'm actually cool with that. No, if you, uh, if you win your division, cool, you can get in, but you don't get a home playoff game if you can't be 500. No, you got to. You won the division. Oof. Okay, but oh, that's it barely, It's happened like once ever. It happened, like, and, and you know what? It happened in that Seattle game, and that was the Beast Quake game, so it's worked out. Yeah, you're right. All right. Um, losers? Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. Hold yeah. that. Hold that. Go ahead, One more thing on Deontay. Go ahead. Can we give an award to him for meaningless storyline of the week? In what? Go ahead. There was a whole run up where he was like, I, I want a Mason to get his chance. It didn't. Isn't the whole reason Kenny came into the Jets game is because him and he yes. got in a fight at halftime? Yeah, so and that finally came out? So that happened. And then he has a quote this week saying he wants Mason to get a chance, which was overblown. He basically was just saying, like, yeah, I'd like to see the guy get a chance to prove himself. Which right. We all saw already and for then, a whole season. And then but. Mitch rewards him with how many targets? I know and then Mitch goes to 10. He got 10 targets, caught them all. Oh, he was 10 for 10? 10. 10. That's what I was saying, 10 for 10. Oh, wow. So then okay, Mitch goes to him, that's a horse leads a, a team, color. 10 for 10. Wow, 98. I mean, that storyline, if anything was to come of that, it would be, oh, he's getting frozen out. No, the exact opposite. You know he has Meaning. the most catches in the league without a touchdown. I don't even remember us looking for him in the red zone other than like some of those corner fades – and that one he dropped. He dropped a, a really easy one. Can we say this, though? I think this has to be addressed. This is a very interesting point. Or interesting fact. Steelers win the game. We agree that they look very well and, as the thing you said, had an identity. I agree. Pat Frymuth thing didn't get a target. That's interesting for them to look as good as they did. Uh, without... is, he on, is he on your losers? No, he's not on my losers because it's not it his has to fault. be. He, I, I didn't put him on mine, but, but I should have. that's not his fault. He can't control if he gets a target. Yes, you can. If he drops the ball. I mean, one of the reasons people don't get targeted is they're not open. Yes. I haven't watched the All-22. This is the problem with watching football. It's impossible for either of us to say. That hasn't even come out yet, and you have to really be dialed in to be watching not this stuff. Not even a target. No, trust me. I started him in fantasy, I know. Oh, okay. You know, you got a goosey. Yeah. He got, got a gooser in playoff time. I was like, I was thinking, I was like, did he get hurt? Like, what's going on? No, Gentry just... got a target and a catch. So, yeah, all right. Crazy. I guess he's honorable mention for loser. Um, let's just start with Marcus Allen. What are you doing? Okay. We talked about this. It was a commercial. You play special teams. You play special teams because you're not good enough to start on defense, okay? Or offense. The Steelers are, have all the momentum in the world. You get the ball again, you get the defense off the field, and you run into their huddle. For what reason? I, I watched it a couple times. I, do you think he thought that, oh, like, I'm on the field. I can, I'm can. i allowed to be in their huddle. I'm on the field because they were on the field. Did he try to, like, figure out what they were doing? It was a punt. Nah, he was, he was talking shit for sure. Inexcusable. And then he's on the sideline with that confused face, like, what did I do oh, and like TJ's talking to him. I'm like, what could TJ possibly apparently, be saying? Apparently, apparently, no. I didn't know this until today. 
because everyone's saying this is a this is a um, reflection on Tomlin, which it is one hundred percent. Like and apparently he didn't um, say anything during the game, but apparently Cam rang him out to dry. That wasn't videoed, but they said Cam was on the sideline in his face. Marcus Allen, if I had to guess, and no one really knows this unless you're in the locker room, is like anyone who's ever been on a team before understands like the energy guy. He might be the energy guy, but I, I can't have that. He cost him three points. No, if you're the energy guy, you that ha- you have to be. You have to control that fine line. You can't be penalty guy. Energy guy's already, um, you know, excusable. You, like so you, you can be gone, energy guy. We don't actually need you. He's, so he's if you're like, energy guy and penalty guy, you're so getting cut. So he's like the Matt Cook to put it into. Yeah, for hockey. Yeah, he, sure. He's like the third line energy guy. Yeah, that's that's but, actually a great call. But you can you could be that, but you can't take the the, the the two minute. We can't have you in the box. We we can tolerate it to a certain extent. Yeah, like this you, cross like Cook, you know, like you want to get into a fight and you know whatever, like you're gonna have to protect Sid and take a penalty. Cool. cool. During a commercial? Yeah, right. I can't have you taking a 15 yard and automatic first down. I mean, the situation of it too. They're fourth and 27, Lou. Yeah, right. We just got a big sack, and it was Cam who got that sack. Mm-hmm. So that's an, that's Cam, maybe why he was. Like, yeah, no. that that definitely played into it. I mean, the worst play of the season, is it? Um, the stupidest play stupidest, of the season. Stupidest. Yeah, stupidest easily. Play of the season. I mean, yeah. I. they must really like him, or he'd be cut, right? Because he's totally if replaceable. If it was up to me, if I was Mike Tomlin, I would say, hey, you, you know what we said before? Hey, Matt, you know what? I don't even need you on the plane. Like, go somewhere else. I would have told Marcus Allen, take the bus home, buddy. Does anyone... I would have cut him right there. Just... And, and it, that's not an irrational move either. I would have done that to make the to show the discipline I have. That's unacceptable. That's we're not gonna. It, that's not gonna be part of this team moving here or moving forward. But of course, Tomlin just lets it. Go. If he was he a guy that we actually needed that came in in packages, that's different. No, Way I'm different. not. I'm not even talking about a starter. I'm talking about someone who comes in in packages. Then I'd be like, we kind of need this guy. Okay, like no one would blink if he was off the team. Okay, like Deontay. What do you mean? Like Deontay gets catches the ball, does the taunting, gets the fifteen yard penalty. Okay, he's a starter. Get it? Yeah. You're on special teams, bud. Even like Pierre, who had a bad play in this game, did also one of my losers. Yep. Um, like if Pierre took that penalty, I'd be like, we need Pierre. Like he's an important player. I know he's not a starter. No, but he comes in on packages. Yeah. Can't cut him. Marcus Allen is like. Yeah, like, I, 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 he's what? one play away from the XFL. That's what I mean, and he does that. On top of, he's the one that we talked about does all the dancing. I, I can't, I can't have him. Can't have him. Can't um, have him. Another loser. I mentioned Pierre, but that's just because he gave up a big play. He wasn't. I don't think he. Was, he gave a big play because his eyes were in the backfield the whole time. Yeah, that's kind of like a rookie thing, but he's not a rookie. Look, I mean, he's he's had a good season. I can't be too mad. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not that mad at that one. Spillane. Um, Just gets beaten space. Yeah. Um, so interesting. Miles Jack being out. Spillane and Bush play a lot. Thank the Lord God Almighty we ha- let Mark Robinson play. Um, seven snaps, okay, on defense. Take it. But a, they did like a cut up on all of his snaps. He was he, he disrupted like every play. Just love the guy. Love the way he plays. Needs to play more. It's not Spillane. It's not Bush. And you're hopefully going to lose them next year to free agency. So someone's going to have to step up. I think they're both gone. I hope they're both gone. Spillane's problem is just he he's too slow. I need a middle linebacker that can cover. That's where we're at. I would I would game plan around. Is that him. asking too much? I don't think it no, is. No, it's the whole idea of a middle linebacker, especially in today's NFL at least. Um Mason Rudolph. That's it, brother. That's it. I, I, I think we talked about this on the fan, actually. I don't think they wanted to show him off. I think they need him to sign somewhere so they get that comp pick. I really do. I uh, really, really any, I mean, that. Mitch just being a professional in that game and going out there and doing what he needed to do to win, you know, running that TD in, not turning the ball. Exactly. 
That's it for Mason. You know, that's it. That's it. And uh, speaking of quarterback and speaking about being a professional, at the end of the game, you see Kenny and Mitch hugging. No, I didn't see that. Kenny was hugging like, hey, man, like great, great job. That's like where we're at. Mason, no. Someone made a good point. Did you ever see Ben and Mason do that? No. <laughs> like ever? Like ever? Well, Ben's a bit of a dick, too. See, well, uh, I agree, but yeah. yeah. Um, all right, final thoughts, Christmas? Let's do it! Wow. Come on, baby! Outfit change? Woo! Tis the season I now. I told you, brother, this is my day. It's my <laughs> holiday. All right, here's how this is going to work. Okay. We just have Christmas traditions. Sure. Loose, loose, you know, agenda here. Can be anything. Yep. We're going to give Christmas traditions. Are you in? Are you out? What are your thoughts? Do you feel strongly? We each got a list. Maybe some crossover. Okay. Start wherever you want. Start where it, where it needs to be started. Frank, do you and the family do the seven fishes on Christmas Eve? No. Oh. No. It's the best meal of the year, brother. You no, know, you know what though? We do um we do crab. You do crab like So Christmas Eve is my brother Roy's birthday. Wow. It's Roy's birthday. Chef Roy. It's Chef Chris- Roy. Christmas yeah, Eve. it's Chef Roy's birthday. In the morning we go to Cleveland. Okay. Roy's never spent a birthday with his friends. Oh, well, yeah, because who who you know, you don't really go out on Christmas. Also Eve. get screwed on presents. See, that's the thing though. Is it one of those things where Hey, Roy, this is your gift for Christmas and your birthday. Yeah. That's, that's terrible. <laughs> well, some people abide by, oh, we got to get them two things. But some people just get them like one big thing. But th- there's people who, who definitely. See, my dad has that same thing. My dad's birthday is the day after Christmas. Yeah. That's, it's, not, it's not ideal. That's not ideal. No, that's. that's, that's so that's anyway, sure. uh, we've always just had uh, King Crab. Okay. It's, it's so, it's delicious. It's one yeah. of my favorite meals. That's great. Yeah. So we still, we still go. Um, my nana's born and raised in Italy, so when she came over, one of the traditions that she brought with her sister and her brother was the seven fishes on Christmas Eve. And it's, I'm telling you, it's fit for a king. We got the, we got the lobster tails. Oh. Hey, it's, yeah, we got like, we, we like do lobster tails. 20 lobster tails. Yeah. We got the bacala. The bacala is mm. salted cod. We got that in a red sauce. We do the fried smelt. Cod is so slept on. Oh, yeah. The cod is delicious. Right, do it right. Crab cakes, salmon, scallops, shrimp. It's the real deal. It's an, and it's an all day affair. You we start we get there like ten o'clock with the antipasta, the cup of cold, the super sad, the cheese. Uh, the, we have a, well, I'll, I'll go through the rest of the Italian foods though. Yes, we go with the. Um, my grandma really hits the chicken cutlets, the really thin chicken cutlets. If you, if you do the chicken cutlets right, there's not much. Bread. They are proper. You do a little lemon squeezed on oh, top. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the fresh bread. Uh-huh. Maybe a little tomato. Oh, come on. It man. is proper. Speaking my, speaking my, speaking my thing here. This is all me. She makes her own wedding soup. Oh, yeah. I Rolls the right. little veal meatballs. Sure. I mean, it is a premium wedding is soup. Is this Christmas Eve? This is just, we get there Christmas Eve. All this stuff is just. In play. So you're the in Cleveland time. Christmas Eve. And Christmas Day. So you'll be watching Steelers in enemy territory. Every year. Well, I mean Well it's it, not on every year. Obviously but, this is nationally televised. It's yeah. a night game, Christmas Eve. Yeah, but. Well that we might get to that in a second. Okay. I might okay. have some on go that. Ahead, go ahead. But yeah, we go with um the Italian pizza where it's just it's just a fluffy square, uh there's no cheese, it's just like a tomato sauce on like, the pie. Like a, like a margarita almost. Yeah, pr- kinda like that. Yeah. Um fried dough. Do you do oh. fried dough? Mm-hmm. Delicious. Yep. Yeah. You, throw, you make it right there. Yeah, you put it in the uh, in, in the sugar. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Frank's my whole life. You think I got looking like this because I didn't eat none of his food? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I, uh, I won't eat the day before. See, that doesn't help me. If uh, I'm really hungry going into a meal, I I can't eat more. Well, I, I have to figure out like, see, it's all about th- you got to plan out your 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 game plan here because I eat at least four lobster tails at least. They're they're kind of small. Yeah, they're three to five ounces. So I got to eat like four of those. So then I plan out around everything else. You know, it's just. It's All right, great. I got one for you, Lou. Go ahead. Opening gifts on Christmas Day. You in or out? Do I open gifts on Christmas Day? Yeah. yeah so the way my family has it set up is Christmas Eve is at my nana's, which is my dad's side. So that's like been our Christmas on that side my whole life. So we always do gifts after dinner on that side. Oh, Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. And then 
my mom's side of the oh, family. Oh, you get both. Christmas oh, dude, yeah, this is real. I told you it's my... Christmas my, Eve my, is strictly reserved for Roy. Only Roy, wow. only Roy opens gifts Christmas Eve. Okay, I can understand It's that. his birthday. Yeah, I can understand that. So you just do gifts Christmas Day. Yeah, like, I mean, that was the thing. Like, you wake up as a kid, there's yeah. presents under the tree. We just never strayed from that. That was always it. Yeah, so I do, yeah, like I said, so Christmas Eve is my dad's side, so that's Christmas there. Okay. And then my mom's side, Christmas Day. Just keep it rolling. I just keep going, yeah. Okay. With that being said, though, I think this is important. Do you take a nap in between the Christmas morning shenanigans and the Christmas dinner? That downtime, that two, three hours when you flick on the NBA or the NFL this, this year, that's the time I use to take that nap. I don't. Oh, I think you should. Oh, I, I think it's crucial. I have to. I'm not a big napper. I have to really be in my zone. Like I can't have like background noise taking a nap. Like there's people in the kitchen. And you're also like, not home. And I'm not home. That's like different. there's I plenty. Can... Like at my grandma's place where I stay. Like there's plenty of comfy spots. Like if I wanted to go upstairs and yeah, I don't nap in beds though. What do you do couch? If I nap, if I nap in a bed, I get too comfortable and I sleep too long. I yeah, really yeah. prefer napping on a couch. You don't want to do the whole groggy thing. Yeah, yeah. I, I feel you on that. So if, if I use the couch, it's not really a nap. Okay. Inducing zone. I got you. Yeah, I got you. But I'm not opposed to it. Okay. Hey, yeah, if no. you can pull it off, I'm I'm for it. I'm like big, big fan of the nap in between. How long? Oh, it's solid. So I'll put. <laughs> so like, let's take the NFL's not usually on Christmas Day. It's usually NBA. Yeah. So like, noon is the Knicks game always. So let's say I flick on the Knicks game. I probably get a good two hours in. Wake up around half, going into the. Oh, third that quarter. is a solid nap. Yeah, dude, I don't do early at all. Like, early's bad. You're getting me. the dinner fresh. Yes. Christmas dinner? Okay, that's another one of mine. I'm going to sneak in another one before you do yours. Okay, go ahead. Do you do the Christmas ham? For Is that a tradition for you, is the Christmas ham? There is. We have gone away from that. There is. I mean, it's not for dinner. See, that's like the stereotypical It's not for dinner, but there will always be like a glazed ham at my grandma's house and yeah. like people like for breakfast like I'll have it like with my eggs but not like intermixed with my eggs it's a thick cut so I'll put it like so that's not the focal point of Christmas dinner no because that is apparently like a it's big we have a ham but it's more of like a breakfast lunch thing heard okay. yeah gotcha which I prefer we we've gone away from that Christmas ham it's good I like it. it's glazed I don't have a problem with ham but like we more do like turkey White meat, kind of more or less. Fish, a couple of different fishes that we don't have, like pasta, stuff like that. See, I called in the fan on Thanksgiving. Okay. They were talking about Thanksgiving traditions, mm -hmm. and there was a ton of turkey slander. Really? And we're like, oh, we, we, we're doing filet now and all this stuff. That's a new thing. I know a lot of people that do filet. Yo, I love filet. I got no issue with that. I'm just not. 364 great. other nights of the year. I'm yes. down. Yeah. Not on, it's not a Christmas thing. And it's definitely not a Thanksgiving thing. I, I know very few people that go with the turkey on Christmas. Yeah. Well, no. Actually, that, I think you're the only one. I, you know, they, they, the, I have a couple younger children in the family. And that's something that they know that they like. So that's something that. Okay. Play it safe with the kids. Play it safe type of thing. All right, I got one yeah. for you. Okay, go ahead. Sporting events on okay. Christmas Eve. Okay. Don't remember many. I remember no, there was a Steelers-Ravens game. That was Christmas Day. That was Christmas Day. Correct. That was the AB. That was the Immaculate AB, Extension. The immaculate Extension. Incredible game. I, I almost like had like a heart attack. That was wild. I can't believe he got in and on that. And the fact that it was Christmas Day. I that, was, that was a beautiful thing. But Christmas Eve, I don't remember watching anything. I don't remember a Steeler game on Christmas Eve. I'd have to go and look into that. There's, fo football doesn't seem to be on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. It just so happened that it... Actually, no. I take that back, scratch that, reverse that. Last time the Steelers played on Christmas Eve was the 05 Super Bowl run. They had to win those last four games to yes. get in. They had played in Cleveland. They beat Cleveland like 41 nothing. The fan ran on the field. Oh, and I... James Harrison, who wasn't a starter then, 
picked up and slammed the guy on the ground. I do remember that. That I was, was the last time. I mean, I was, I was pretty young for that game, but. Oh, I was 2000. I mean, I was in, I was in eighth. You had to be in like fifth grade. I was in fifth grade. Yeah. I do remember that game because we, we played Cleveland, and that's and had, my home mom's to, side are Browns fans. Oh, yeah, yes. So yeah. we're watching it. So you had to go, we had to win those last four. I mean, it was such an embarrassing loss that people stopped watching. So they played Christmas Eve yeah. against Cleveland, and then they played New Year's Day against the Lions. That's when Bettis, everyone shared. By the way, the Harrison year. was on Ben's pod, and he was like, yeah, I slammed that fan because like I didn't know who he was gonna, what he was going to do. Yeah. I, I thought he, he was gonna, if you actually go, he actually, that dude had hurt. Oh, for sure. That, he's talked about it. And not to mention, it wasn't warm in Cleveland. Freezing. That, that, it's never warm in Cleveland this time of year. That I've been field there had every to be, year of my life I've been in Cleveland. That field had to be frozen. Dude, Cleveland is freezing cold. It's right next to the lake. It's right. so cold there. And uh, James Harrison picks you up and slams you on the frozen turf. I mean, that had to hurt. Absolutely. It had to hurt. Um, I got one. I, wait, I don't... I, can I just say... Whatever you want. I'm not excited about this timing. I don't really, I don't really want to be watching the Steelers Christmas Eve. I would love it if it was Christmas Day. See, I like the fact that it's night game. I like that, but like because all the festivities are all done. So like everything's done, everything's cleaned up, the dishes are done, everything's put away. You're, every, you're my just family relaxing. does eat really early dinners though, because my grandma's old. Like what's Christmas Eve dinner? I'm at like Bro, she, I'm around if, like if five. my grandma had it her way, we'd eat at like five. Oh no, that's where we're at. Yeah, I don't see anything wrong with that. That whole eight, seven, actually, she'd brought probably one at like four thirty. The whole seven eight o'clock dinner thing is not my. It's not me. No, we eat early because my grandma's got to go to bed. Dude, she gets up so early too. She gets up at like five a.m. That's the thing. They always get that, all those people at that age. My grandma's the same way. Both my grandmas, for that matter, they're early. They Drinks coffee all day long. And it doesn't help. We're still in bed by seven. still in bed by like yeah. Yeah, literally. Yeah, but yeah, no, yeah, we do the five. There's nothing wrong. No, no, we'll be fine. Um, all right, go ahead. You got one? Yes. I got, a, I got a good one left. Frank Michael Smith. Do you watch the Christmas story at least once when it's on that 24-hour loop on oh like TBS God. and TNT? Do you watch it start to finish once? Oh, not start to finish. Okay, but like it will be on. I, I will have scenes. It will be on a TV. During somewhere. Christmas season, I will have seen several scenes of that movie. But – you you're not the person that I don't love that movie that much. I don't either. Yeah, but I'd I, rather watch like I, I'm good. You know, because they're always cutting the commercial. I can't watch movies on TV. There's too many commercials, so I'll watch it until a commercial and then I'm out. Yeah. So I'd much rather watch like Jingle All the Way with Schwarzenegger. That's my I love that one. Um, I watched a funny one on Netflix actually. There was I mean it's super corny. It's a rom com. It's called Love Hard. Okay, dude. I was thoroughly surprised. This movie's actually funny. I'm, I'm watching it tonight. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, it's a feel good rom com, but it's funny. I'm a huge rom com guy. Okay, so great. You'll love it. Christmas, this is right. <laughs> You'll love it then. Oh, we're going to put it on as soon as we get home. Lou. Yes. Irish cream coffee. I have two drinks. First, Irish cream coffee. Irish, or just Irish coffee. No. Bailey's. No. Cream. No. Coffee. Never had it. No one's ever like offered to put like some rum in your coffee or anything. I don't drink coffee. Oh, or there's that. I don't drink coffee. Uh, like I need to be addicted to anything else. Okay, I don't drink coffee, and um, we don't. My family does not really drink for holidays. That's probably a good thing. Like one bottle of wine will suffice like the five people that will have a glass. My mom got me started on this. Like, I'll have a Christmas coffee. Like, my, my, this side of my family what, what is hammering of, coffees. Okay, there is so much coffee flowing. So what time of day is this Irish coffee for you? It's during present opening in the morning of Christmas Day. Oh, shit. My, my, my mom okay. would be like, want a splash? Okay, so it's early. It's early. Bro, she gets me started early. Dude, see, that's it, what I'm saying. If I had that, I'd be, dude, that nap would be even easier. It's not you. You don't get like plastered off this though. It's just like just one. Yeah, it's it's not that much. It's not strong stuff either. Okay. Yeah. No, we don't do the coffee. The only thing is, uh, Nana makes homemade limoncello. Oh, that sounds good. So, yeah. whew. Whew. take a shot of that. Hello, world. Whoa. Second drink for you. Go ahead. People are very polarized on this one. I, I've been shamed for drinking this. Uh, eggnog. Never had it. Oh, try whole, some eggnog. In my life. What are you doing? Never had it. It's good. Never had it. I mean, it's like thick. It's creamy and thick and like... What alcohol goes in eggnog? 
Whatever you want. <laughs> Whatever you want to put in there. Nope, never happened. It's good. You don't. I, you don't even have to drink with alcohol if you don't want. I mean, you can just have eggnog. Do you do eggnog? If I'm offered, I'm not whipping up some eggnog. But if if, if it's around, I'm having an eggnog. So you're having uh, you're having an eggnog and an Irish coffee, Christmas. Uh, eggnog, uh, yeah, eggnog afterwards. Okay. <laughs> I, I, wait, I cannot guarantee you the eggnog though. I will give you a drink that I have every Christmas. All Eve, right, Christmas Day, the holiday season, cranberry ginger ale. Wow, I did not think you were gonna say that. Outstanding, out Canada Dry, cranberry ginger ale. I am a big. It's a. It, they only bring it out for the holidays. I'm a big ginger ale proponent. Oh, you gotta have this every time I'm on a flight. Yes, ginger ale. Oh, Frank, you gotta have this. Oh, you have to try this. It's I, and I, it's I don't. It's perfect holiday. It's, it's I great. do not drink soda. The only soda I will ever order is oh, if it's mixed in an alcoholic drink like vodka or like or so, I don't I don't know. I'll drink a soda then, but straight soda, like a Coke or something. I'll never have just like a Coke. Well, have, you need to have a cranberry ginger ale. I will. De- I, I'll make I was, you a deal. I, that's what I was getting at. Ginger ale is my exception on planes. I'll make you a deal. You have a you have a cranberry ginger ale. Okay, okay. I'll have an eggnog. Deal. Okay. <laughs> Let's deal. lock it in. I didn't live in that world. Right. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to save my best one for last. So Go ahead. anyone listening, you got to stick around for my last one. I don't think I got I, I, I'm, I'm good. You go. I'm covered up. Candy canes. What's my thought on candy canes? In or out. I can have like a half of one, but I hate the circle. Like the, the Dude, hook. spare me the candy cane. The you, hook on I top, can, I can't ever get I, it out of the plastic I thing. can tell you it's don't... It's all sticky. You don't want a candy cane. You don't seem passionate enough. I'm not going out of my way. What if you got one in your stocking? You eating it? No. Yeah. It's just... it's. I'm just like giving it to someone else. Like, I'll have it. Like, I'll have... Like, like I said, I like the stick part of it. But I can't get You're the, just sucking on it. You'll suck on the stick of a candy cane? Exactly. But the hook... I can't get out of the plastic. Then it starts breaking apart, right? They're just so now not... I got all the shit all over my hand. Nah, 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 nah. And if you bite it, it really gets stuck in your teeth. Yeah. I'm out on candy canes. You're out on candy canes? Okay. Yeah. And they're they're like a Christmas icon. The image of the candy cane is a Christmas icon. But you I, don't just, e- I wish it was better. But you don't ever see anybody be like, here's the candy cane to eat. Oh, like the chocolate pretzel candy canes, though? I'm in. Chocolate pretzel candy canes? Yeah, they'll sell them. Cho- it's like a chocolatey. You ever have like thing. the flavored candy cane though, like the spree candy cane? Probably. I, I'm still out. I can get down with the spree. That candy sounds candy better. Cane. But all right, final one. Go ahead. This is a big one. Okay. And I have a story behind this one too. A recent story. I'm excited. Are you in? If you're a kid. Okay. On knowing Santa's fake. Spoiler alert for all the kids listening. Wait, Sorry. Wait, wait. Say, okay, wait. Say it. Say I just it. grinched all these kids. Yeah, you did, Scrooge. Uh, wait, <laughs> say, say, wait, say that again. Are you in, if you're a kid, on knowing Santa's real? Like, you can pick any age. Because it's, it's funny as a kid. Like, At some point, you're getting made fun of. Like, was my Christmas ruined the, the, the year that I found out Santa wasn't real? Like, do you want to know? Like, if you're a kid, do you want to know the truth or not? No, you got to ride that wave as long as you can. Until you think about it from a logistics perspective and say, there's no way this fat dude can go down a chimney in every single house in the world. Did you just do some math one year where you're like, nah. Yeah, I think that's how I, <laughs> nah, I got to that right. point. I was like, Mom, hold on. <laughs> there's no way this dude can go to every house in Aspenwell, let alone the whole world. So you brought it up to your mom, and she was like, yeah, it's fake. I forget how it happened, but... I think we're in the same boat here as I had a younger sister. Okay. And Tommy's, I think Tommy's the same age difference as me and my sister. So there's Tommy's no, four years younger than me. Yeah, it's about the same thing. So there's like, did you have to do that whole thing where you had to keep your mouth shut because, or did, or did, it did, was, did Michelle I, sit all the boys down no, at once? No, no, no. My mom still writes presents from Santa. Oh, okay. oh it she just, just never. No, never it was, it's just. It. It's just. She was like, one day they'll just do the math. I guess I don't know. Like, oh, it, she she never had the talk. But here's here's the story behind this. I'm in Brazil. I'm hanging out with my girlfriend, uh, her dad, and she's two young brothers, and they're seven and ten years old. Okay. I'm hanging out with a ten year old, and uh, we can speak a little bit of Portuguese to us. I actually, might have told this story in the podcast. I, I told the story somewhere. Certainly did not. Okay, I was like, yeah, like. Um, 
what you ask for for Christmas or whatever, or like, uh, maybe, and I was asking his dad about it. And, uh, I asked him, I was like, um, what's Santa bringing you? He's like, Oh, I want like this really expensive thing. Okay. I was like, Whoa, Whoa. I was like, uh, you know, I don't know if Santa's going to bring that. And he looks at his dad and he goes, I'm looking at him. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. Dude, it was a sharp line from a ten year old. That is, that's so. I guess he 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 figured it out quickly. So I asked, I asked the dad. I was like, "Why?" Like you told him about Santa, and he was like, "Yeah, he wanted something real expensive." So I was like, "Nah, Santa's me." <laughs> he just straight up said, "I ain't getting that shit." No, he was like, "Look, dude. see, like that. See, like you could now. Did you have that conversation in Portuguese? Um, because you could have got yourself. It's in, like it's like half Portuguese. Okay, because you could have got yourself in trouble there. You're not fluent in Portuguese. No. So you could have accidentally said something wrong in Portuguese, you could have ruined this poor kid's Christmas. Yeah, could have. You could have. I, I, uh, That's yeah. why you got to revert back to English for shit like that real quick. Yeah. You don't want to get yourself... See, if you say the wrong thing in Portuguese, you don't realize you're saying it. <laughs> the dad was so proud, though. He was like, yeah, like... Nah, I just told him. Yeah, he said, I ain't getting that for him. It, was, it felt like such a load off his back. Like, as a parent, that how, how'd it be hard? Like, you have to be up in the middle of the night, putting things under the tree, like... Keeping this lie, this elaborate lie that there's this... You have to put milk and cookies out for yourself. You got to eat it. You got to eat, at least take the bite. Yeah. Write a note. There was always a Santa note. Like, hey, thanks, guys. Like, <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of things you got to keep up. And now some parents these days do like the elf on a shelf thing. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I can't get down with that one. We never did the elf on the shelf thing. I think that was after our time. I, 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 was, I had someone had to explain it to me. I'd never even heard of it. Now there's, now there's the Hanukkah version. You know that? No. Mench on a bench. <laughs> That's real. It was on Shark Tank. That's real. Incredible. Yeah. I've been called a mench. It's a compliment. Yeah. So they, 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 you have Elf on the Shelf and Mench on the Bench. Incredible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like I think parents are relieved. They're just like, yeah, I'm done with this charade. I'm done. Just telling them. Yeah, it kind of lost its... Like what? It, you, you're not, you're not going to tell them. They're going to get made fun of at school. It kind of lost its flair. But then do you want to be the kid that tells everyone at school and then the parent... Yeah. It's kind of lost. You'd its rather story. be that kid than be the last one to know. You'd rather be the first and the last. But if you're the last one to know, it's kind of on you. You're just yeah. an idiot. No, yeah. If you're in like you're, you, you have to be in if like. If you're the, in like fifth grade and you're like, oh, I can't wait for Santa to come. You might not bro. make the sixth grade, dude. Yeah, bro, chill. That's that's Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Lou. Merry Christmas, buddy. Hey, yeah. best present we could get. Yeah. The over seven and a half. We're almost there. We are so close. Big present. If Santa wants to come down that chimney and deliver a dub, down. I, we I, just need one of the last two after that. I don't see how. To be honest with you, I see the wins being the both games at home. We can go to Baltimore. Well, I'll tell you what. If Lamar Jackson ain't playing. I don't even care if he plays. They're going to win two out of three. Um, wait, I have one more thing. Go ahead. I shouldn't have saved this to the end. I hit a monster bet. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, we, we got into this a little bit, but... Monster bet. Okay, go ahead, explain. I have a free... I love these stories. I have a free bet. Yeah. And it's 50, it, it was actually like 115, and I I split it. So yeah. this bet was, what it was like 50, it came out to like 57 or something like that. Do the math, whatever. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I know I'm going to watch the World Cup. I want to put a bet on this. I know very little about like what to bet on in soccer, you know, other than I've watched all the games. So I have that knowledge. Correct. I have seen Argentina play a bunch of times. Same with France. So I was like, you know what? Let me do an exact score because you're not really getting so much value in all these other places. I was thinking, I was like, Oh, like two, one looks good either way. Not great. Then two, two was way higher. Yeah. And that just means two, two going extra time. Correct. Because it's all based on the 90 minute. So I bet on an exact 2 2 draw, Messi to score and Mbappe to score. Oh, and a little SGP action. So I was like, wow, like I got Messi like pretty quick here. Feeling good. And two two goals from Argentina, but there was just nothing happening for France for the first 70 minutes of the game. Like all of a sudden. Dude, all of a sudden they go from having not even a scoring chance, they buried two in two minutes. Yep. And, and now, now you're just hoping to hang on. To now I'm 57 to win like 1,500 bucks. Yeah. And I have other bets. I had I had a separate bet on 2-2. I had a separate bet on Messi to score. All of a sudden, this is like my best betting day in my life. It's all coming. 
Isn't that nice? But finishing that out to get to 2-2 two -two was, that stressful? was a sweat. Yeah. It, dude. I thought France was going to actually win 3-2. How would you like to be killing Mbappe, score a hat trick in the World Cup final, and lose? Hmm. That hurts. Oh, that hurts bad. Woo. Well, I can't feel. I don't feel bad for him though. Like he he did win last time. No, so. I don't feel bad. But I'm just saying. Imagine. That's what a tough. game. Just tough to swallow. What a game. So wait, we get that game one day after we get the best NFL game. Best NFL comeback of all time. Best best regular season game of this season at least. What a bet. What a really good two days, man. I mean, we were blessed. If you're a fan of sports in general, if you're a fan of the game of sports, in the competition, yeah, couldn't ask for a better two days. Really. Agreed. Agreed. All right, Lou. All right. Hey, Merry Christmas to everybody. Merry Next Christmas. Next time we'll see you'll be after. Uh, we'll have to do one before the new year. We'll do it. Yep. Even All if right. we have to go remote, we'll get it. We'll get it done. All right, Lou. All right, buddy.